Welcome to Population Health, Big Data, Interoperability and Analytics for Population Health. This is Lecture A. This component, Population Health, discusses the application of informatics and informatics methods in population health management. This unit, Big Data, Interoperability and Analytics for Population Health, explains the challenges and opportunities of developing predictive analytics for population health. The objective for this lecture is to identify challenges in using population health data sources, including issues related to big data, interoperability, and population segmentation. Note that this unit does not explain the details of predictive modeling techniques. Please refer to the dedicated component on data analytics to learn more about predictive modeling and analytics in general. This lecture discusses the common data challenges faced by population health analysts. This diagram shows the overall steps involved in developing analytics for population health management and risk stratification. As shown in box 1, the first stage involves the merging of various data sets and developing a centralized or distributed population health data warehouse. These data warehouses usually include independent variables, such as demographics, diagnoses, and medications, and also the dependent variables, also known as the outcome variables, such as cost, hospitalization, emergency department ED admission, and other types of utilization variables. The second step, depicted by box 2, includes various processes to prepare the data for analysis, such as fixing data quality issues, deleting or imputing the missing data, and transforming the data to meet the assumptions of a given analytical approach. For example, if logistic regression will be used to predict a binary outcome, such as hospitalization, the data should follow a normal distribution. Thus, variables that do not follow such distribution need to go under various transformations to conform to a normal distribution. However, if such transformations are not possible and the model's assumptions cannot be met, a different model should be used that matches with the nature of the data. The next step contains the development of modeling and data mining approaches. As depicted in box 3, this step usually requires a base data set and an outcome data set. If based on insurance claims data, the base data set usually includes one year of medical and medication claims that would provide most of the independent variables, and the outcome data set often includes the dependent variables such as cost or other utilization markers. Thus, the predictive model is usually developed based on the base data set, and the predictive accuracy of it is often measured on the outcome data set. Sometimes, however, the accuracy of the model is also measured on the outcome variables available in the same base year. The latter approach is usually referred to as the concurrent model to differentiate it from the former predictive models. As illustrated in box 4, the next step contains the model's validation and evaluation process. In this phase, the analysts use various statistical and data mining concepts to measure how good the model is in differentiating the outcome variable, and how reproducible it is when used on other datasets. Some of these evaluation concepts include measuring the model's validity and reliability, goodness of fit, consistency and reproducibility, and parsimony. After an acceptable model is developed as pictured in box 5 and 6, a critical step is to apply it within the context of a population health management workflow, and then using the data generated from such activities to feed back into the original population health database so it could be updated with new population trends and findings. As marked by Circle A, this lecture discusses the common data challenges of developing population health data warehouses. Other phases of the population health analytic process are discussed in the next lectures. The common data challenges in developing population health analytics include the following. Challenges of using big data for population health analytics and specifically how the increased volume, variability, velocity, veracity, and value of big data may affect model development and accuracy within population health. 
challenges of interoperability, such as exchanging data with non-clinical partners to acquire data on all determinants of health for a given population. Challenges of defining a denominator and selecting a set of variables, specifically how to select the outcome, time frame, population, and the purpose of a model and other challenges, such as the error and bias introduced by the underlying variation in the process of care, nature of intervention, and random chance. Big data is a collection of data sets so large and complex that it becomes impractical to maintain and process them using traditional database management tools or other common applications. Big data is rooted in various advancements in database optimization and computing sciences. Over the years, these advancements included the development of relational databases, the explosion of web-based data, the development of large data warehouses, the introduction of large unstructured data sets, the ability to process database actions and computing in a parallel processing fashion, the advancement of in-memory databases in contrast to much slower disk-based databases, and finally, the advancements in cloud-based computing and clustered data storage. These technological advancements, along with a long list of other advancements, have made it possible to deal efficiently and effectively with big data in both research and operational environments, including healthcare. The Human Genome Project was perhaps one of the first projects that introduced the concept of big data to healthcare analysts. Since then, other advancements, projects, and initiatives have also pushed the boundaries of healthcare data. For example, the massive rollout of electronic health records, EHRs, has generated an opportunity to merge clinical data sources across various providers and perhaps integrate data sources such as genomic and mobile health, mHealth data, with clinical data sets to improve population health analysis. Indeed, the amount of healthcare data collected by 2020 is expected to surpass more than 25,000 petabytes, which is equivalent to 25 billion gigabytes of information. Big data is often defined as having at least one of the following specifications. A higher than usual volume of data. This is also referred to as the data quantity, size, or length. A large variety of data types or data sources that bring along new data structures, standardizations, or vocabularies that are uncommon to population health. A high velocity of data with high frequency of refreshes, such as real-time data feeds. A complex veracity of data sources, with varying accuracy or completeness for population health analytics. And an ambiguous value of new data sources, in terms of cost, workflow, complexity, feasibility, and governance. Note that these specifications should be treated relative to the common practice in a given field. For example, a petabyte of insurance claims is considered high volume for population health analysis, thereby indicating a big data challenge, while this volume could be considered routine in other fields. This diagram shows the effect of big data's data volume on the population health analytic process. The affected analytical processes are partially depicted in the top half of the diagram. The lower half of the diagram shows the reason for such limitations and how big data solutions can help solve them. As shown in the left side of the bottom diagram, the limits of traditional relational databases have created new challenges for population health data warehouses, where the volume of data is expanding beyond traditional means. Some existing population health datasets are reaching trillions of rows and tens of thousands of columns and thus are not conforming to the traditional relational database structures. Big data platforms and solutions are becoming more common in such conditions. The big data alternatives include non-relational solutions, also known as NoSQL, such as document-based databases, columnar databases, graph databases, and even hierarchical databases. These new data platforms store the data in new formats that are often foreign to traditional population health analysts, 
thus requiring a steep learning curve to adopt them in existing population health analytic pipelines. This diagram shows the effect of big data's data source variability on the population health analytic process. The affected analytical processes are partially depicted in the top half of the diagram. The lower half of the diagram shows the reason for such limitations and how big data solutions can help to solve them. As shown in the left side of the bottom diagram, the rigidity of traditional relational databases has created new challenges for population health data warehouses. Where the variety of data sources feeding into population health databases is increasing rapidly. Some existing population health data warehouses include hundreds of different data types, and merging them through traditional means is becoming almost impractical. Big data platforms and solutions should become mainstream in such conditions. The big data alternatives include cloud-based NoSQL data platforms that are neutral to the table structure and can adhere to fluid metadata tags. Then, if needed, these solutions can generate relational data marts on the fly for more specialized population health applications. This diagram shows the effect of Big Data's data velocity on the population health analytic process. The affected analytical processes are partially depicted in the top half of the diagram. The lower half of the diagram shows the reason for such limitations and how Big Data solutions can help to solve them. As shown in the left side of the bottom diagram, relational databases are usually limited in storing and managing temporal data sets. Future population health data warehouses may include temporal data generated by remote devices and mHealth solutions. Big data platforms and solutions should become more mainstream in such conditions. The big data alternatives include temporal data sets and platforms that are designed to receive, process, and analyze temporal data in real time. This diagram shows the effect of big data's complex data veracity on the population health analytic process. The affected analytical processes are partially depicted in the top half of the diagram. The lower half of the diagram shows the reason for such limitations and how big data solutions can help solve them. As shown in the left side of the bottom diagram, relational databases are limited in measuring and fixing the quality of data entered by end users. Population health data warehouses will increasingly face complex data accuracy and completeness issues that might become impractical to rectify using relational data structures. Big data platforms and solutions should become more mainstream in such conditions. The big data alternatives include specialized mechanisms to resolve these issues to some extent. This diagram shows the effect of big data's ambiguous data value on the population health analytic process. The affected analytical processes are partially depicted in the top half of the diagram. The lower half of the diagram shows the reason for such limitations and how big data solutions can help to solve them. As shown in the left side of the bottom diagram, traditional data platforms are limited in providing approaches to measure the value added of each data source. Population health data warehouses will increasingly test the value added of new data sources and will probably face challenges in determining the best data sources to improve the predictive analytics for a given population. Big data platforms and solutions should become more mainstream in such conditions. The big data alternatives include automations that can enhance the identification of valuable data sources. This schematic depicts the potential sources of big data for population health research and operations. Note that although the sizes of the circles represent the potential data volumes from each source, the proportions of the circle sizes are not real and are represented figuratively. The potential data sources for population health are encircled. These data sources vary from provider and health system-centric data systems, as seen on the left side of the diagram, to the patient and community-centric data systems, depicted on the right side. The clinical data sources include EHRs, 
health information exchanges, HIEs, and insurance claims, among others. The patient and community-centered data sources include mHealth devices, personal health records, PHRs, web portals, and community-wide datasets, among many others collected on various levels. As indicated in the diagram, the bottleneck of the big data integration is bringing and merging patient and community-centered data sources into clinical data sources. Although this is slowly happening, the big data aspects discussed in previous slides are preventing the smooth integration of all potential population health data sources. As discussed, the term big data and its specifications are relative to each domain. Here is a short list of the big data sources for population health research and analysis. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services Data Warehouse, CMSDW, which mainly contains insurance claims for Medicare and Part D beneficiaries. The data warehouse is updated on a daily basis and contains the data of more than 50 million members. The IMS Data Warehouse also contains medical insurance claims, but it is mainly focused on commercial insurers. The IMS Claims Data Warehouse has around 100 million members. Parts of the IMS Data Warehouse also include medication and lab results, which could be highly beneficial when developing and training complex population health analytics, as well as select EHR records. IMS Data Warehouse is updated on a semi-annual basis. Another commercial data warehouse is the Truven Health Analytics Market Scan, which includes medical insurance claims but also includes large survey data, such as health risk assessment surveys. The Truven Health Analytics Market Scan includes data on more than 130 million members. The Optum Labs Data Warehouse includes medical insurance claims data on a large population as well as EHR data for a large portion of its members. A good percentage of the data is linked to the insurance claims. Data warehouses such as this will enable the development of population risk stratification models that are derived from collective claims and EHR data sources. The Veterans Health Administration's Corporate Data Warehouse, or VHACDW, includes the EHR backup data of all of its members. This data warehouse is updated on a daily basis. The National Patient-Centered Clinical Research Network, PCORnet, includes the aggregation of EHR data across multiple centers, also known as Clinical Data Research Networks, or CDRNs, and is updated monthly. The Healthcare Systems Research Network, HCSRN, formerly known as the HMO Research Network, is a standardized data warehouse of shared EHR and insurance claims data among a number of large health systems. Several health information exchanges, HIEs, also have large in-house centralized data warehouses that are updated in real-time and provide a unique opportunity to develop real-time population health analytics. And the last group of data warehouses is several geographically-based data warehouses that can be used to add additional layers of information for a given population. It should be noted that most of these data warehouses are either only commercially available or are not accessible to outsiders at all, thus limiting the development and training of population health analytics solutions. One of the fundamental challenges of using big data to develop predictive models for population health is the fact that, in some cases, very large population health data warehouses cover almost the entire population of interest. Indeed, the number of patients represented by these large population data warehouses is almost equal to the total population of interest, and this eliminates the sampling dilemma altogether. As depicted in the diagram, the distribution of numerous variables in a given population of a data warehouse may indeed reach the same normal distribution of the total population. This is fundamentally different from much smaller sample data sets that are often used to construct and generalize a model to a large population. In addition, in such large data warehouses, almost every variable could be statistically significant in predicting the outcome. Thus, model pruning and optimization become more important than model development. 
An ideal population data warehouse will include an entire stack of variables that represent every aspect of a population's health. For example, a predictive model based on a data warehouse that covers all determinants of health for a given population will probably perform better than a model that is trained on a narrow aspect of the population's health. However, the lack of interoperability is impeding the development of such data warehouses, and thus such models are yet to be developed. Interoperability is the ability of a system to exchange electronic health information with and use the electronic health information from other systems without special effort from the user. As depicted in this diagram, interoperability crosses multiple population levels, such as personal health records, electronic health records, health information exchanges, and national and international health data systems. Within such a broad context, any barriers to interoperability will cause population health data warehouses to miss critical information that could have been useful to improve the predictive power of population health models. This diagram illustrates the difference between a highly interoperable population health data warehouse on the right and a lower interoperable warehouse on the left. The low interoperable population health data warehouse, shown by Circle 1, completely misses certain types of information, such as social and mHealth information, for its population denominator. On the other hand, the highly interoperable population health data warehouse, indicated by Circle 2, includes a broader spectrum of data sources, thus improving the chances of developing predictive models with higher accuracy and power. While extracting training and testing data sets from population health data warehouses to develop and train predictive models, there are various challenges with denominator and variable selections. A short list of such challenges includes Selecting the denominator of the population that should be used for training and testing is always tricky. There are multiple factors that can be used to modify and refine the definition of a population denominator, such as age, types of disease, any special conditions such as disability, and insurance coverage. Another intrinsic factor, not directly derived from the denominator but effective in the selection process, is data quality levels. Selecting the time frame or length of the training and testing data sets is also complex. Sample questions to answer could be, is 12 months of base data set enough to represent the variation of factors, such as age, diagnoses, and medications in a given denominator? Or, is six months of outcome data set enough to show the variation of a specific utilization marker for a given denominator? Selecting the proper outcome is critical. Outcomes can vary depending on the desired prediction and improvement in a given denominator of a population. Typical outcomes are cost, mortality, emergency room ER admission, hospitalization, and readmission. Selecting the best and most parsimonious list of factors to predict an outcome is also a delicate task. There are many factors to choose from, especially from non-traditional data sources. Typical predictors are demographics, diagnoses, medications, and current cost. And finally, identifying the purpose of the predictive model is usually a challenge by itself. Often, predictive model development is misaligned with the operational needs and goals of population health management programs. The alignment of population health models with organizational goals and integration with existing workflows is critical to the success of any population health management program. Some examples of these challenges are presented in the next slides. The complexity of the denominator selection process affects predictive model development. The top half of this diagram refers to the starting point of the population health modeling process. The bottom half of the diagram shows the modeling and data mining phase of this process. The highlighted rows of the base data set show that only a segment of the data is going to be used for model development and training. This selection could be based on various factors ranging from the age of the denominator to the data quality of the selected rows. 
and, depending on the denominator selection, there might be challenges concerning what data types or sources to select from, what outcomes to measure, and if such data is available at all. These challenges are depicted by multiple circles with a question mark in them. Selecting various timeframes for the base data set can affect predictive model development. The top half of the diagram refers to the starting point of the population health modeling process. The bottom half of the diagram shows the modeling and data mining phase of this process. As depicted by the circle with the question mark, the length of the base data set which in this case is the training data set, can affect the predictive power of the population health model. Selecting an outcome can also affect predictive model development. The top half of the diagram refers to the starting point of the population health modeling process. The bottom half of the diagram shows the modeling and data mining phase of this process. The highlighted columns of the outcome data set show that only a segment of the data is going to be used for model development and training. This selection could be based on various factors, ranging from the outcome of interest to the data quality of the selected column. In addition, depending on the outcome selection, there might be challenges concerning what models to choose. Selecting various predictors can affect predictive model development. The top half of the diagram refers to the starting point of the population health modeling process. The bottom half of the diagram shows the modeling and data mining phase of this process. The highlighted columns of the base data set show that only a segment of the data is going to be used for model development and training. This selection could be based on various factors, ranging from prior knowledge about the effect of these predictors on the desired outcome to the data quality of the selected column. Predictive model development should be aligned with existing workflows and operational goals. This diagram refers to the population health modeling process discussed extensively in prior slides. The encircled Use of Knowledge box stresses the fact that models developed by the analysts should be properly integrated with existing population health management activities to maximize the effect of the models in enhancing patient satisfaction, improving the population health, and lowering the overall cost. There are also other innate challenges with developing predictive models for population health. These intrinsic challenges are almost impossible to fix but analysts should be aware of them. Process of care refers to the fact that different providers or clinical workflows generate different data values for the same event or fact. Thus, the same fact or event might show up differently in the same population health database. Nature of intervention suggests that different interventions with different levels of risk may be encoded similarly. Thus, the population health database does not contain the true level of risk for those interventions. Random chance or external factors indicates that two exactly similar patients of a population health database may develop two different risk profiles due to factors not included in the databases or simply because of random chance. This diagram shows the effect of process of care and different coding habits on population health analytics. On the left side of the diagram, two different practices are shown. Practice A may choose a slightly different code for the same diagnosis than practice B, simply because they are used to doing so. Note that as shown on the right side of the diagram, this coding discrepancy will affect the accuracy of the predictive model in forecasting the outcome. Hypothetically, if all patients had had the same diagnosis and outcomes, the group of patients coded by practice A will create a bias in the data, as their diagnoses are encoded as higher risk. This diagram shows the effect of nature of intervention and lack of coding representation of such variations on population health analytics. On the left side of the diagram, two different interventions are shown. One of the interventions involves a special type of anesthesia, while the other does not. These two types of interventions carry different risks for various outcomes. However, both interventions are encoded in the same way. 
These lost details of the predictors introduce variants in the data and thus affect the predictive power of population health models. As shown on the right side of the diagram, the actual outcome is different for these two interventions due to the nature of these interventions. However, the factors reported by the standard coding terminologies do not show the difference. This diagram shows the effect of random chance or external factors and lack of other data sources to represent these hidden variations on population health analytics. On the left side of the diagram, different sources of variation are shown, namely other external factors not represented in the data and simple random chance. This will result in various outcomes for the similar cohort of patients, as shown on the right side of the diagram. Indeed, the model is using the same predictors that do not represent the external factors, but finds different outcomes. Note that there is almost no way to fix random chance. This concludes Lecture A of Big Data, Interoperability, and Analytics for Population Health. This lecture discussed big data challenges, such as high volume, high variability, high velocity, low veracity, and questionable value of new sources of population health data. Interoperability challenges, such as issues with data exchange between clinical and non-clinical partners of a population health management program. Denominator and variable selection challenges of population health analytics, especially selecting a proper outcome, setting an appropriate time frame, defining the actual population, and identifying the purpose of the analytical model. And finally, other analytical challenges, such as the varying process of care in a given population, the underlying nature of interventions, and the chance of random variation in a general population.